Hey, let me know if this resonates with you. As a young adult, you learned that cardiovascular exercise was actually the bomb. Cardiovascular exercise helped you burn calories. And if you wanted muscle tone and you wanted to be lean or to lose fat, that was actually the ticket to helping you do so. I'm Deborah Atkinson, I'm the founder of Flipping 50, and I'm gonna share with you three thoughts I used to have, why we believe them, why you were taught them back in the day, and what the real truth is about cardiovascular exercise. Let's jump in. So back in the day, I loved cardiovascular exercise. I actually started teaching aerobics back in the day when it was high impact, and then it was low impact, and then it became step aerobics, and then it became slide and spinning, and all of the other options, and then we blurred them all together and did fusion classes of kickboxing and spinning and everything all at once. So if you can relate to that, we are of the same era, girlfriend. But here's what we used to think. We used to believe that burning calories led to fat loss. Burning calories was the key. Here's the challenge with that. It's not about calories alone. Now, can we ignore completely calories that you eat, the calories in and the calories out, those that you burn or expend in your daily activities of life and or in exercise? No, we can't ignore it. I'm not suggesting that. You can eat whatever you want and you can eat whatever amount of calories you want or how you eat them. Let's just face it, a big piece of salmon and a chocolate cake or a piece of chocolate cake may have similar calories but one of them is going to land very differently on your hips and your thighs and your lips, right? So what we want to consider is that it's hormones that determine the calories that you eat or the calories that you expend, how your body deals with that, whether that encourages more fat burning or it encourages more fat storage. Let me explain that. So if you're exercising in a way that actually is very stressful to your body, all exercise is stress. Let's just say that. All exercise. If you go out for a walk, small dog, big dog, doesn't matter. It's stress for your body. Your body actually kind of likes to be on the couch. So we're disrupting that, making you get into action. And not to confuse you, but we also do say in the fitness industry, a body likes to move. You were meant to move. And it is true. You will have more energy if you move more during the day. However, you can't take that too extreme. So it is a little stress, but the difference between exercise and other emotional, financial, uh, career stressors is that they're under control. We can choose how much stress do we give our body? Do we go for a short walk or a really long, hours long hike? Do we do it taking fuel, already fueled before we go? Take fuel along if you're going to be out there for hours without access to anything. That's going to be less stressful to your body. Do you feel again afterward because you've had that stress? So now we reduce the overall stress load. Those things all affect the stress impact. So it can be more positive. Say if you go shorter when you really need shorter. And let me just suggest to you that in midlife and beyond, but particularly if you're just approaching menopause or you're just after menopause, that is when we're really in what we call menopause transition. It's a more volatile stage. We don't handle extra stressors really well right then because our hormones have changed. Many of them have declined. And when that happens, cortisol goes up. We don't handle it as well because we're dealing with more relative to what we did when we were 20 or 30 even 40. So many of you may have entered perimenopause in your 40s, but it probably wasn't at its height. That late stage perimenopause is just a little bit more detrimental to your hormones. That's the time when you may want to take some of that really high in impact and high intensity exercise and transition it to doing more walking, more moving. Not that you can't do little bits of that high intensity exercise, but you don't want to do more of it. Knowing that research tells you, marketers tell you, exercise experts tell you, but you have to listen to the whole story or they may not be telling you the whole story. Yes, high intensity interval training is known to be more fat burning or at least after the fact be more fat burning. But if you're already in stress, 
doing high intensity exercise is more stressful to your body than doing lower intensity movement like going for a walk or doing yoga. And at that moment, when you're already stressed from relationships and work and finances and your schedule, preparing even for good things like weddings and celebrations, you may need yoga. And that actually may help you rebalance hormones to the effect that what you're doing is enabling more fat loss because you have to take away the gate. You have to take away what's in the, in the way. And if you're under stress, a lot of stress will make your body hold on to fat. It's self-preservation, and it is from centuries ago, but we still are always going to have that. Just it's evolution, and it's coming with us, even though we're well beyond that. But we're under so much chronic stress today, always connected to our phones, and people can get us for work, even when we're not working, and we can constantly be thinking and doing and it's hard to just be. And when you can just spend a little bit more time being, you may actually then be able to climb over here and do a little bit more high intensity activity and get better results from it. So even if you are hardcore, you've always been really fit and really active, it may feel a little bit like an insult and nobody addresses that piece of it. It's like, oh no, that's a piece of my identity that I exercise very regularly and now I'm like, I can't do it and that's how I negate stress and I love it. I totally get it, I totally get it. <laughs> People in the fitness industry went there for a reason and it, I am no different. I love it, I love exercise a little bit on the more side, more than many people do. But I've also realized that I can no longer, right now, my body is just saying, you're gonna do better going for walks and hiking and doing strength training than if you try to do another endurance triathlon. That's not gonna work well for you. I gained between 12 and 14 pounds of inflammation during my last endurance event so that more formula wasn't working for me. So I want you to think about that. We think burning calories is the answer. It's not the only answer. And really it's not the best use or application of exercise. What I want you to do is think activities that you love because loving something means you're spinning off more endorphins, you're getting more oxytocin and serotonin. Those are feel good things that happen when you hold somebody's hand, you hug somebody or you have sex. And you can make that happen through exercise that you enjoy as well. It doesn't happen from exercise you hold yourself accountable for and don't like. Different, right? So think of it that way, apply it. If what you're doing right now isn't working, try to give up the calorie burning piece of it just for a moment. Do move, your body needs to move. You need the circulation and you need that regular stimulation. That'll actually help you sleep and stabilize blood sugar. But it's not all just about calories burning. And if we say 30 minutes of strength training, 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity, there is no question that you'll win if you say, which one is gonna burn more calories? And you said cardio, it absolutely will. But here's the deal. It doesn't do it long term. You have to have another fix of that cardio in order to do the same good that around the clock for up to 48 hours after you strength train, your body is just burning more calories standing here, sitting here, going for a walk, sleeping, reading a book. All of that encourages the afterburn that happens because your body's doing more repair after strength training than a cardiovascular workout, okay? Now, point number two, we also think if we're, we want to be toned and defined that we should do more cardiovascular exercise as if we got it, again, it comes back to thinking we need to burn those calories, but to get tone and definition requires muscle. There is no difference. When you say I want tone and I want definition, you're also saying to me, I want muscle. And you may think, no, I don't want to gain any muscle. I want to lose fat so I can see the muscle. It won't happen like that after 40. It won't happen like that even more after 50. And after 60, absolutely game over. We're done with that. That ship sails. You actually got away with it. It wasn't working that well when you were 30 or 40. 
but you won't get away with it now. So it's really important that you're considering tone and definition comes from lean muscle. And what that lean muscle, again, is coming back to the calorie burn. We want to elevate calorie burn around the clock. When we're at rest, when we're cleaning the house, we're cooking dinner, we're sleeping, we're at rest, we're driving in the car, you have more lean muscle mass. And that's not you have more size. That it, They're not synonymous. Actually, if you have more lean muscle mass, it's more compact. So it's actually probably going to be a smaller size. You're going to potentially, the scale didn't move. However, you're going to say, but my clothes are fitting differently. I don't understand it. What I call that is a poor woman's way to measure body composition. If you don't have a smart scale, ideally you get one so that at home you get on that smart scale. It may tell you, tell you weight, but I never ever would want somebody to be weighing anymore and knowing weight only without knowing what's my body fat percent and ideally how much lean muscle mass do I have in pounds. And you're watching that number. You never, ever, ever for the rest of our lives, we don't want to see that number go down. We want to be doing everything we can to preserve that lean muscle mass because then we're preserving our strength, our stamina, our endurance, our desire to do more all the rest of the day with energy because we've got it. Our libido, if you're struggling with that a little bit, muscle strength training is your best friend. And yet, <laughs> here's the thing. It's not about more weight training. So if you think, weight training, that's the thing, then I should do that more days of the week. It's absolutely wrong. I've heard this said by popping in just to several videos. This is actually how I do research knowing I need to give these messages to you and to the trainers because not every trainer is created equal, okay? But it's really important that you understand you don't want strength training four or five days a week if you're advanced. No. So you want twice weekly. If you do three times a week, you want to make sure that these two anchors over here with a lot of time to rest and recover between, maybe you're separated by something that is much lighter, much more functional, meaning you're doing things on one leg, doing things with one arm. So they're functional like daily activities of living. Think about it. If, if anybody does the dry cleaning anymore, I know very few of us do, but if you were holding the dry cleaning, you'd hold the dry clean and you're opening the door with the other hand. It's why pushing like this or pulling like this, when do we do that in daily activities of living? Maybe pushing the lawnmower, but how often do we do that? So the key is let's hold one thing. Let's hold one weight, maybe nothing in the other arm, or let's hold weights in both arm, but only move one arm at a time because it becomes much more functional. So what's really important is that you have the recovery time between. And when you do functional work, it's a little bit lighter. You've got more things going on. It has more engagement for all muscles, but these two anchors, when you're going a little bit heavier, actually boost your metabolism a little bit more. So now we have the best of both worlds. We're gonna enhance your mobility, your ability to create more movement instances comfortably every day, all day, and we're gonna boost your metabolism. You're gonna be a much more happy camper because right away you're gonna start feeling stronger, start seeing more definition, having a better appetite because you've got more lean muscle mass, and when I say better appetite, hungry at meals, not hungry in between. That's better appetite. You shouldn't have cravings when you're exercising in your sweet spot. And you have more function. You can easily rotate. Movement becomes more comfortable. So you can lift heavier on these days that make your metabolism matter. That's a really important piece of looking at the whole picture. Now, let's talking about before exercise and looking at strength training. It's what you do between the exercise that really has more impact on your ability to burn calories. So we come back to burning calories during the activity. You're absolutely right. Cardiovascular exercise burns more calories, but then you're done and you pretty much recover. With strength training, you burn fewer during that session, but you burn them around the clock for up to 48 hours, just a little bit but for a much longer period of time adds up over time to much better. So your odds are going with strength training every single time that you are choosing between should I do strength or should I do cardio? I'm due for both. 
I always do strength. Never skip that. Okay. Toned and defined, remember coming back, it takes muscle. And then last but not least, it's not just what you burn during the exercise, it's what you burn around the clock. That's gonna matter to weight loss. So when Mayo Clinic looked at weight loss and risk of overweight, severely overweight, or obesity, that's classified as 30% body fat or higher. And that's not that hard, y'all. There's about 70% of the population fits that right now. Post-pandemic, it went up because many of us were less active and we were also a little more stressed and we were comfort eating and comfort drinking, but we weren't comfort eating and drinking kale and salmon. So y'all know how that goes, right? So it's really important that if you're looking at weight loss, we need to look at what happens to you around the clock and how are we helping you utilize blood sugar. So every time that you eat, blood sugar goes up. If we can keep it from going way up, we just get a little bump. We come back down, we're back into fat burning mode. If it goes way up and stays way up, so does your insulin and that puts you in fat storage. So anytime you have the opportunity to say, I haven't been strength training regularly, I'm going to start. Strength training is your best friend. If you're three days out from your last workout and you say, I don't know, I don't have time for both. Should I do cardio or strength? Strength training is the answer. Keep that up. That will keep you alive. It will keep you in a higher metabolism body right now, more toned, more defined, more energy, more libido, and your 85 year old self is gonna thank you for that as well because right now is the time to start banking the muscle that you will need then. We may fall, we may slip, and if we do, we are ready because we have more muscle in the bank that when we are in bed rest, we're losing muscle, we're losing strength. What happens when we get up after that? We feel vulnerable, unstable. We tend to do less because our brain is saying, I need to keep you safe. So maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should say no. Maybe you shouldn't go to the store on this day because it's wet outside or it's icy or it's snowy outside. The more things you start to say no to, the less active, the more likely you lose more strength, you lose more muscle, and that is the beginning of the downward spiral. And we're in a moment in time where you may not be thinking about that. You may be thinking, my pants are too tight, and I get it but this is a two for one. Strength training really is the best answer. Now, I wish I'd have known this when I was a trainer, a fitness instructor in my 20s, then a trainer in my late 20s and early 30s, just starting out, because I worked with women since that period of time who were baby boomers, who are late stage baby boomers and silent generation right now. Had, had I been able to help them more, they would have had more lean muscle tissue, been less likely to fall, less likely to fracture. But we have the opportunity because we now have the science. I would love to know if this was helpful for you. If you still have questions about the cardio need and the strength training need, and I'm gonna put a link below. If you don't wanna miss another video, subscribe and we'll give you some demonstrations and resources in other videos down below in the comments. Thanks so much for being here.